All right, thank you all for coming. This is Let's Do Lunch, I am Hope. And before we get started today, I have a little bit of an announcement um, or an update, I suppose. So today is my last day in this position. And that means that after today's Let's Do Lunch, it's going on a little bit of a break. Now that means that um, we are really interested to hear from you if you like Let's Do Lunch, if you'd like to see it continue and how you would like to see it evolve. So once we're done here, I'm going to drop the link to the survey into the chat and hopefully you'll all let us know what you think so we can best serve your needs and contribute to your nutritional wellness. So since today is my last day here, I'm going to be really brave and we are going to talk about something that might not be very popular and that is sardines. So if you've been for a wellness screening recently, we talk a lot about sardines because they kind of have a great um, blend of healthy fat, high in healthy fat, low in, in saturated fat, um, which is really great for improving your cholesterol profile. So today we're gonna talk about why I really like to eat sardines, um, how you can learn to like them or how you can learn to like any other new foods that are uh, something you wanna include in your variety. And then I'm also going to show you a pretty easy blender sauce. So even if you're not willing to try sardines, you at least have a new fun and easy and delicious sauce that you can put on pretty much anything to make it taste good. Um, it's very versatile. So we're gonna actually... It's a meeting that Shelly sent to me. Oh, so we're going to be talking about the sauce at first and then we'll talk about um, why sardines, and we'll talk about how to learn to like new. So this sauce that we're making is called Romesco. Um, it's adapted from the blog Cookie and Kate. It's not a very traditional Romesco, but it's very easy. Um, so we're gonna start off with some jarred roasted red peppers, and we're just gonna plop everything into the blender or the food processor and hit go, and it's going to be delicious. So I pop the top on my um, roasted red peppers, and I'm just going to drain them into a colander and then plop that right into my food processor. They make a funny noise when they come out. And I'm just getting rid of all the liquid. And then they're going straight into the food processor. I do not want them to drip all over the kitchen. Um, blender sauces, I think, are so easy and delicious. And it's a great way to bring some new life to some old routines. All right, the next thing we have is half a cup of almonds. I'm using slivered almonds today because I don't wanna to ask too much of my food processor. It just makes it a little bit easier for the food processor. So we're gonna do half a cup of slivered almonds. If I can get them open. This is for the rescue. So the almonds are gonna provide a little bit more healthy fat. They're going to provide some nice savoriness. My goodness. There we go. We got it. All right. Half a cup of almonds straight in. The next thing we have is sun dried tomatoes. I think I'm in my sun dried tomatoes era because I want them in everything. Uh, it calls for a quarter cup, and it looks like I'm almost out because I've been putting them in everything. So I'm just going to put in what I have. And I'm actually going to use the oil that's in the sun-dried tomatoes jar because we're going to need some oil at some point. Um, and this is a highly flavored oil. So I'm just going to put that all directly in. You'll notice I'm not measuring the oil. And I think that's because it really depends how much you need um, on what ingredients you have and how strong your blender is. So we're going to be a little bit loosey-goosey with how much liquid we're putting into this. The next thing is two cloves of garlic. And if you don't want to use fresh garlic, you can also use um, garlic powder or granulated garlic. I just looked up the conversion. For one uh, clove of garlic, it's about a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder. So start there and then taste in the dust accordingly. So I just smashed these with the heel of my hand and I'm peeling them. I am making a mess today per the usual. Um, and then when they're slightly Squashed. You can just throw them in that food processor or blender hole. Make sure you get all the papery bits off of them. 
um, and then the food processor can really do the rest of the chopping for you. All right, next we have red wine vinegar, and we are going to use a tablespoon of that. Adding acid to any food really helps it to brighten up. This is a new bottle. Really helps it to brighten up and um, kind of bring out some of the flavors. So one tablespoon of red wine vinegar. The next thing we have is smoked paprika. We're going to do one teaspoon of smoked paprika. Pro tip, the opening to this jar is kind of small and I can't fit a teaspoon measuring utensil. So I'm gonna do two of a half teaspoon just because the half teaspoon actually fits in the jar. Oh, it doesn't actually fit in the jar. I was wrong. I still have to pour it out. Okay, doesn't fit. Next, we have crushed red pepper flakes. Um, I hope you can't see this mess. Maybe you can. For crushed red pepper flakes, we're gonna do a quarter teaspoon, unless you like it spicy, which we can do more. If you don't like it spicy at all, you can leave them out. And we will do some salt. So you'll probably wanna do a quarter teaspoon to a half a teaspoon of salt, and then taste it, see if you like it, and adjust from there. So I'm gonna do just a little bit over a quarter teaspoon to start, and then maybe I'll add more later. So now I'm going to run my food processor, and while it's going, I'm going to stream in either a little bit of oil or a little bit of water. When I make this romesco sauce, I usually use oil because I like the, the richness and the healthy fats and how it helps me stay full. But since I know I'm gonna be eating this with sardines, which are very oily already, I might use a little bit of water. So I'll just, no, not that. I'm gonna use a, a measuring cup with a spout on it for my water, I just kind of get that ready to go. And we do have some of the oil in the food processor from the sun-dried tomatoes. So I'll pulse it a couple times before I put in the liquid. And it looks to me like it actually doesn't need any more liquid, which was kind of a surprise. I think that the uh, little bit of oil I put in with the sun-dried tomatoes was enough. Everything else that went in today was pretty juicy and it looks pretty good. So no additional water or oil needed today. Depending on your ingredients or the time of year, that might be different when you make it. All right, so, it smells really good. I wish that I could um, smell this to you over tea. So I'm gonna set that aside and we're gonna change gears and talk a little bit about sardines. Um, and while I do that, I am going to put my bread in the toaster. We're making sardine toast. So I'm gonna slice a couple of uh, pieces of bread. So here's your first tip when you are learning to like a new food, to pair it with something else that you already really love. For example, when I was learning to like beets, I knew I really liked goat cheese, and goat cheese and beets are a good natural pairing. So I would do a lot of goat cheese and a little bit of beets um, until I really liked the beets on their own. So for sardines, if you know you like bread, treat yourself to a really nice quality loaf of crusty bread, white bread, whatever kind you like. Um, because if your goal is to learn to like something, if you associate it with something that you already love, it can help you like it more. So I'm going to toast two slices of this really nice and fresh, crusty white bread. And while that is toasting, let's talk about sardines. So the first thing that I want to clear up is the difference between sardines and anchovies, which are very different from each other. So when I say sardines, a lot of people say, oh, those are way too salty for me. And I think that's most people confusing them with anchovies. Anchovies are extremely salty and you use them for flavoring. So you might use one or two anchovy fillets in something or put them on your pizza. If you like Caesar salad, Caesar salad dressing is made of anchovies. It adds a lot of depth of flavor and saltiness to Caesar salad dressing. You also see them a lot if you like Thai food, which is made with a lot of fish sauce, and fish sauce is made from anchovies. 
So anchovies, you only want to use a little bit because they're very salty. So for your reference, this little tiny can of anchovies has two servings, but if you were to eat this whole can of anchovies, you would get over, no, almost 2,000 milligrams of sodium. That's almost your whole day's worth of sodium in this one can of sardines. I mean, sorry, well, one can of anchovies. I don't want to get them confused. One can of anchovies is almost your whole day's worth of salt. Versus one can of sardines has 300, oh, sorry, 200 and, 260 milligrams of, um, of sodium for this whole thing. So that's much less and much more um, reasonable. So the question about substitute for anchovies, um, it really depends what you're making and what your goal is, but you can also use soy sauce. Um, that's another thing that's got a lot of salt and umami in it. But any sort of substitute for anchovies is gonna be pretty high salt. So the best advice I have is just to use less of it. If something calls for something that's really salty and you're watching your salt, just reduce the total amount you're using. Okay. So Sardines, we've already established that they're not very high in sodium. They're also a great source of protein, high quality, easy to digest protein. They are a great source of healthy fats, which we talked about a little bit. And one of their shining um, best qualities in my opinion is how convenient they are. You don't need to work for them. You just pop the can open. They're already cooked. They're already ready for you. You don't have to do anything besides put them onto what you're eating. They are also very low in mercury compared to other fish because they're small, they're at the bottom of the food chain. So they are the least amount of mercury that you'll get from any seafood. Um, they're also very sustainable. They are not overfished, so it does not supremely disrupt the natural balance to consume them. They might, and I think this changes from time to time, but they might even be more sustainable than certain types of plant-based proteins that you eat. Just do a Google on that to make sure that's still up-to-date information. Um, and they're also affordable. So compared to other sources of high quality fish like salmon, that's gonna be a lot more expensive. Canned sardines are gonna be a lot more uh, affordable. I think a can is maybe around $3 these days. So that's a significant difference. Okay, so that's my um, spiel on sardines and why I like them. Oh, also I think they taste delicious. Not everybody thinks that, but I really do enjoy them. So one tip for learning to like sardines is since they're so oily and rich, to pair them with something that is acidic. So that might be something like red wine vinegar. It might be something like lemon. It might be something like um, pasta sauce, marinara sauce. Um, mustard is my favorite thing to eat them with. People like them with hot sauce. So whatever you can do, to put some acid on them makes them really balanced and delicious tasting. So let's do that now. So we're gonna have our toasts. I'll get a plate and my toasted pop. So I'll get those out. And we're gonna start with the romesco sauce. So there's my toast. And I'm going to layer them up with some of this sauce. So that's gonna go as the base to the toast. Oh, I probably should taste it first. It's pretty good. I might add a little more salt, but I think I like it. It's nice and chunky. So a good scoop on each. And I think the next thing that I'm gonna do is gonna be my sardines. So let's pull them out. If you don't want to try sardines, that is okay. Um, one tip for trying them is to enjoy them with somebody else who really likes them so you can see them enjoying them, but also so you don't feel bad if you have a bite and then decide you don't want any more. Then you won't feel so bad about them going to waste. Um, if you eat them with somebody who doesn't really like them and they say, ew, and you say, ew, that doesn't really help you like them any better. So, we got to somebody who joined late. I just spread some romesco sauce on the toast and the recipe will go in the chat. So these sardines are pretty hefty. They're big fat ones. And I'm gonna break them up a little bit so that I'm not getting so much um, big chunks. They're not very pretty, but they taste good. Um, another tip to trying new foods is to try them more than once. So if you have sardines once and you think that was not a nice time, try them again another day. Try them a different way, try them with a different topping on them. Try them with more mustard, more hot sauce, 
um, and give them another chance on another day. All right, so I've got my sardines nestled into my romesco. We're gonna slice up a little bit of um, cucumber and a little bit of red onion to go on them because I think that nice, juicy, crunchy, cold will go really well with these oily fish. And I think the red onion will also kind of help to pop things a little bit. So why do we always want to try new foods? That's something we do a lot when we're kids, but as adults, a lot of times we get pretty convinced we like what we like and we don't really branch out. So a couple of reasons. The first one is that it's really good practice for your brain to keep you sharp and interesting to try new things, especially things that you think you don't like. We get out of the habit of that as grown-ups when we are in control of our own actions um, and it makes it a little bit hard to try new things. Uh, but it is important to continually expand your boundaries and to put yourself out there a little bit. I also think that with nutrition, more variety is better. The more that you can vary the options that you have, the better chance you have of getting in all your nutrients and not getting tired of certain things. So as, my, as many options as you can have can really open up the most balance. So this is it for our, oh, actually, I can't put the moment on that too, for our toast. So I think that was all the topics that I had for sardines. Eat them with somebody who likes them. Try them more than once. Put a little bit of acid on them. It's good for your brain. More variety is better. Um, and all my reasons for eating them. So that's what little toasties look like. They're nice and colorful. A lot going on. Um, if you really are scared of sardines, it can help to hide them. So put another toast on top so you don't look at them. And I am very curious to hear if you try this and like it. However, um, if you don't like it, I won't be here. So thank you all so much for coming. Um, we've got some questions. Could you add the sardines in the sauce so you don't see them? The sight does scare you. Um, you could, I would do maybe like mash them up a little bit and add some sauce in another separate container rather than putting the sardines in the full batch of the sauce. Because if you don't eat it very quickly, it might get a little funky sitting around the sardines. So I would maybe take the amount that you want to eat, mash them up, add a little sauce, and then put it on the toast. Great idea. All right. Who here is brave enough to try sardines? Give me a thumbs up. I also should have asked who already likes sardines. We've got a thumbs up from somebody. Hopefully they're willing to try them. All right, cool. Well, thanks for coming. That's all I've got for you. And have a wonderful weekend.